Oh, hey there. Just got a little uh, packet tracer, uh, my rendition of packet tracer for uh, CCNA2, you know, uh, chapter 6. And it looks big, but uh, I think this one's actually pretty quick. Um, I guess we'll find out. Um, this may not get you 100% because I'm just doing it with uh, my little Word document and everything here. Uh, yeah, but let's give it a try. So first thing I'm going to do is hop in and see what kind of IP addresses we have on everything. Enable. Show run. And as with some of the other ones I've done, I am just going straight to the chart. But it looks like we already have everything done on the chart. So R2 is the one we need to get to, I guess. Um, so let's find the instructions of where we need to go on R2. You mean they configured all that for you guys? Oh, you guys are lucky. Oh, and PC1. All right. So here we go. Use the address space of 10.10.16.0 slash 24 design and IP addressing scheme. Split the address scheme into equal size networks by subnetting it. Okay, so they're asking us to do a slash 25. So now we got a 10 dot... Uh, our two net networks would then be, uh, you know, 10, 10, 16, 0, so that's 25, and 10, 10, 16, 128, slash 25. All right, so we, we're doing okay there. All right, so that's what we have, what we know so far. Um, let's go with the next one. Assign the first of these new to subnets to PC1 LAN. Alright, so PC1 LAN is right here. Okay, sounds good. Is that on our chart? Dog on Word document. Um, PC1 LAN. Yeah, okay. For each subnet, assign the first usable IP address to R2 and the last usable to the PCs. Okay. First usable, so G0. Let's see where we're connected on G0. That's PC1. So PC1 is 10.10.16.1 with a 255.255.255.128. And PC2 or G02 would then be 10.10.16.128 with the same sub mass, subnet mass 255, 255, 255, 128. All right, so that's what my chart's looking like for, for there. So let's wait, is that the right one? Never mind. It's the wrong word document is now closed. All right, so now it looks like this. Um, so now on our PC, what were we supposed to use for the PCs? Assign for each subnet, assign the first usable IP address R2 and the last usable IP address to the PCs. Okay, so we have 10.10.16.128. Dot one twenty seven to your broadcast, so one twenty six is our last usable. Same subnet mask, same network. Uh, last usable on this one would be our broadcast would be two fifty five, so we're at two fifty four. So hopefully that's what you guys got in your chart. have in your chart. Um, it's just NA, default gateway. All right, so I'm not putting the default gateway in. It would be this, right? They can't put the default gateway in because it's actually the router interfaces, but I expect you guys to know that by now in CCNA. Um, so let's put this, go into this one, desktop, IP 10.10.16. Dot, nope, it's not. Dot 126. Change that subnet mass so it's a slash 25. 
or three two five fives and a one twenty eight, and then our subnet mask is our router interface for our two G zero zero, which is ten ten sixteen dot one. Um, our PCs don't aren't having IP version six, so this PC is done. Let's do the next one. So we have, let's see, 10, 10, 16, 254. Um, make that a slash 25 as well. There we go. And the network is 120, 129. Oops, sorry. I messed that up in my chart. 128 is the network, and 129 is the first usable. Okay, so we have that there. Now we're going to go into router one. We're going to say interface G or router two. Sorry, interface G00. IP add 10.10.16.1 255 and then we're going to go into. It's turned on, right? Yep, it's turned on. Uh, interface G01, and we're going to say IP add 10.10.20, no, not 20, sorry, just looking down on 10.10.16.129, .10 um, and put our subnet mask in too. There we go. Save that up. Move on to the next step. Um, first one, so configure configure an IP version 4 summer route and default route. Configure IP4 for, for default route on the R2 using the next hop address. So R2, our next hop, is the serial on the other side. Um, that'd be our default route, right? So if it's not here, default route says we go out here. So how we're doing that is we're going to say configure T. And first we're going to do it. Do show CDP neighbors. CDP is not enabled. Well, that doesn't help us. So we're just going to look at our chart. And our chart says that we're looking for um, R1, S1, 1, 0. So it's 10, 20. We could probably also have figured it out by doing a do show IP route connected. Right, so the one that's connected through our serial, the 10.20 with the slash 30, um, we know it's going to have to be in there. So it's going to be IP route 0, .0, .0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0, and then the next hop of 10, 10, 20.1. And so what that's saying, right, is where we got that number is we are going out the serial interface. This is the next hop to send it to all networks, including the internet. So let's make sure we read the question right. Configure the default route on R2. So yep, we're on R2. We have our default route. Let's make sure, let's, let's give it a good old fashioned WR or write run. Um, configure a, a, a default route on R1 using serial zero zero as an exit. Alright. So serial zero zero. What? Doesn't mean configure summary. Oh. Configure a default route. I read that wrong. I thought it wouldn't make me a summary and didn't make much sense. Okay, so config t IP route 0, .0, 0. This one's easy. We don't even have to look it up. 0, .0, 0, 0. Right? 0, 0, 0. Default route. And then we're going to use s 0, 0. Sorry, I just put IP. We need IP route. IP route. And it says warning. This better be point to point. It is. So then configure an IP version 4 summary route on R1 for the internal LANs. Use the exit interface. Okay, so hopefully you guys understood from the chapter the summary route. So all we have to do is what it's saying is to summarize out this way, what networks do we have? 
And so the networks we have, we can, the reason it doesn't tell us anything, right, is because we had to find those anyways. But, so we have to summarize 10.16.1 and 10. That's, wait, where are these 20s? We're directly connected. Yeah, we don't have to summarize those. Um, so we just have to summarize 10.6.1 and 10.10.16. Um, 128 which we've already subnetted so we already know their summary remember we split the slash 24 up well the slash 24 includes both of those so that's all we have to do is use the slash 24 right we subnetted them now we're unsubnetting them summary is like an unsubnet so ip route 10.10.16.0 255.255.255.0. That's what we subnetted them from. Now we're just putting them back in there. And what's the exit interface? I believe it is S0 slash 1 slash 1. Let's see if I type that right down there. I did. Okay, so now we have that. So let's see if we can ping. Let's, let's try to ping our PC. I'm looking at my chart. And let's try to ping 10.10.16. Uh, 254 and it worked how about 126 and that worked so we're good there um, I wonder if these guys can ping let's see I'm not sure if we'll have to do I haven't read far enough to know if we have to do anything this way but we're gonna try to ping the uh, server PT thing over there, ping 64.100.100.10. And it works, so there's our static routes up there. Okay, so let's go to our next step. IP version 6, we all love it, we all love it. Um. Configure IP version 6 default route on R3 using the exit interface. Big into exit interfaces on this. I don't like exit interfaces. They can cause latency if it's not a point to point like the warning tells you. Alright, IPv6 route. And we just go colon colon slash zero. And we say our exit interface is. Let's see. I'm going to look at my chart because it doesn't have it listed there. We're on R3 S00. So it's right above me. I should have just looked right there. All right. That's our default route. So next, let's see. We have configure a default route on R1 with an exit IP version 6 on R1. All right. Here we go. IP route. Colon colon slash no. I'll do this. But it's IPv6. And then our default route is S01. Is that what it wants us to use? Um I think so. And it says I'm wrong because I'm not in config T. Sorry. IPv6 route. Colon colon slash zero. S0 zero, zero, 01. There you go. That one's done. What's next? Uh, configure a summary route for R1 for the internal lands. Use what? Use the exit interface. All right, so this one's f a lot more fun. Um, so what we're looking for is, uh, you know, we have 2001. Right, we're just looking for the R3 network. Do we only have one? That's not right, is it? No, I'll hear it right here. So we have 2001. 
zero zero a. So what we're looking for is the difference between two thousand one. And I'm going to break it, not all of it, but where it's starting to change. So one. So one zero zero b. And then, and the same thing, but A, right? Those are two networks. Is that right? One, yep. Okay, so then to find where we're last at, you know, let's break these into binary. So we have, you know, zero, zero. Zero, zero. Four zeros and four zeros, right? That's seven. Um, and then we're going to have it's a fourth? Yeah, because we should have 16 binary bits. Um, four zeros there, right? Two zeros for each digit. Then we have A, which would be that, I believe. And then we'd have similar, except we would have right here. So we got to summarize where they're last all the same, so it's right here. So how many bits is this that would now become one? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So twelve on forty-eight would be let's see. Let me get my calculator out. No, it's sixty, right? 12 and 48. Just make sure. Slow math today. Apologize. That is 60. So our summary route is uh, 2001 DB8. And actually, the last thing, this also shows where they last the same. So they're last the same right here, so that should be the digit, so that would be our lowest number that we would use. We go 2001, um, A, slash 60, I believe. And you can tell me if I'm wrong, but no, 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 I am wrong, because I said these were the last one they were saying. They're actually last the same here. It's only have one off, so it would be A, slash, 63. They lose one digit right there. Alright. My bad. So. Um. So we're going to say. Put that one done. So we say IPv6. What did we come up with? 2000. IPv6 route. Uh, 2001. DB8 1 A slash 63 the X interface of what did they want us to use? Um, no, R1, so the exit interface S. It's this one. S0 slash 1 slash 0. What's wrong with it? P version 6 route. I didn't put enough stuff in. I didn't put my uh, colon colon right there to make the network. Alright. There we go. Now, I'm going to save it. And uh, let's try 
IP version 6. Make us do ping here. No, we're just going to do ping. So we're going to ping. Um, PC 2001. I'm going to do PC 3 2001. DB 81A colon colon F. Network. So now we're going to do B. So our routes work there. All right. So what are we on? Final setup probably. And so configuring an IP version 6 floating static route on R1 to uh, using all right so a floating route right it's just a backup route and so we just have to if we're using the IGRP we'd set it one above EIGRP um, we're doing it based on the floating static route uh, to to six to the sixty four one hundred one hundred at zero slash twenty four network. Um, so we're just backing up the default route, I guess. So if you forgot what the administrative distance is, that'd be the first thing to do. So we do do show IP route, and so we're backing this up. Oh, I guess it doesn't show you. It should so administrative distance is one for a static route. So we have to make it one more. So we're saying IP route 64.100.100.0.255.255.255.0. Um, exit interface, and they want S00 slash 1. And then we do a question mark here, right? So that CR means we can press enter at any time, but that we can put more stuff in. It says distance or metric for this route. So we're putting in the distance, and we're going to say two and so now it's floating route if we do show i do show ip route it's not there and that's how we want it to be um wait it is there okay i need to re configure a static Alright, so normally you don't see a floating static, static route because it's just a backup route, but wait, but because this is a default route and this is a static route, it's going to be different, so, hmm. Anyways, typically you don't see a floating route because it's a backup. That one is a strange backup. We just switched the AD on it. But, anyways, I believe uh, that's my that's my version of this. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.